Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of The Straight Path. I'm your host, Fuad Muhammad. Um, the niqab is a hot topic discussed both amongst non-Muslims and Muslims. And so even some Muslim countries claim that it is something cultural rather than from the religion. Well, we on this program today, inshallah, on The Straight Path, we would like to discuss the niqab from an Islamic and social political perspective. And to do this, we are joined by our guest, Sheikh from the United Kingdom, Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad, who is a member of the Islamic Sharia Council of the UK. He's also the director of the Muslim Research and Development Foundation based in London, UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. And alaikum salam. Welcome to the program. We're also joined by our brother, Sharif Hamdi, from uh, Egypt. And now, of course, we know that Egypt was the country where. The niqab was a hot issue a couple of months ago, a few months ago, and we do hope, inshallah, that we can have a fruitful discussion in order to bring out what it really is the ruling of the niqab. I introduced the, the program, Sheikh, that the niqab is something that is being discussed not only by Muslims, but by non-Muslims. And even some Muslim scholars or claimed scholars claim that it is something cultural rather than something Islamic. How do we understand what is the position of niqab as Muslims? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I think now it is difficult for us to separate between any so-called religious discussion and political discussion. Yes. All are mixed up. The religious discussion, the political angle, as well as the social angle. Of course, from an Islamic perspective, religion is not. Uh, is not different or is not divorced from politics. Yes. Uh, I mean, it, it is not totally separated from politics. Mm -hmm. Islam is not a religion, as many people understand it. Mm -hmm. Islam is a way of life. So there is a political perspective in uh, Islam. There is a social perspective. Islam deals with all of these things. So when we discuss niqab, we have to put all these perspectives into the discussion, mm -hmm. otherwise the, our discussion will be a uh, sort of secular discussion. Yes, yes. Now when we talk about niqab, <coughs> there is the shari ruling, okay, and there is contextualizing this shari ruling, and mm -hmm. that's what brings the political discussion into perspective, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. And that's why we say when whenever we want to give a fatwa about a particular issue, <coughs> We need to bring the abstracted theory and we need to contextualize it. Mm -hmm. Contextualizing it, it doesn't mean changing it based on context, but taking care of context when we give the fatwa. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, niqab, as absolutely a fiqhi discussion, juristic discussion, what is the ruling of niqab? Here, I would like to tackle the uh, this issue from a different perspective because um, normally this is my nature okay, and I okay. don't want to get into just a normal mm. uh, what you call uh, normal discussion routine discussion that everyone is uh, discussing. Oh, just before you go into that point, Sheikh, I, even in, in the introduction, I didn't say what really was niqab because it's so, <coughs> the word niqab has become so famous and so popular. If you can just give us a quick definition of niqab okay. before going okay. into the topic. Yeah, what we mean by niqab is covering the face. Mm -hmm. The face of, let us be precise, otherwise mm -hmm. many people will say covering the face of men. No, <laughs> it is known as you said. Mm -hmm. It's covering the face of uh, females who reach the age of puberty in front of non-mahrams. Mm -hmm. So we are not discussing of covering the face of females in front of females, including non-Muslim females. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not discussing it regarding covering the face mm -hmm. in front of men who are allowed to see the woman who are not allowed to marry her permanently. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are called the mahram. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about covering the face in front of young children, whether Muslims, non-Muslims, or else. Mm -hmm. 
see, it's good that you mention this point because I remember one of our sisters in the UK, she had uh, a few interviews and she wrote some good articles, mashallah, jazallah khair, sister Fatima Barakatullah, about niqab. Mm-hmm. And she said to me, do you think that, <clears throat> do you believe that uh, some of the things that we have taken for granted, non-Muslims, they are not taking it for granted. Mm-hmm. So she said, one of the journalists, when she interviewed me, she thought that I wear w- niqab in front of my husband, in front of my children, in front of women. <laughs> so when she came to visit me at home, mm-hmm. and uh, this sister, uh, she, she, she said, I purposely invited her to my home to see me in my home. So when she came to my home, she saw me dressing normal, without niqab, without even covering my head and uh, normal clothes. And she mm. was amazed. And mm. she said, do you wear like this? And she said, yeah, well, 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 what's wrong? <laughs> she said, but oh, you talk about niqab. Mm. Then she said, no, niqab, she explained to her. Mm-hmm. So sometimes some non-Muslims, they might not understand the full Islamic picture. So yeah, because, that, because yeah. if not, the media is it's just... <laughs> portray that okay these are the women who <coughs> always keep their face covered and it's always black exactly. and that's it exactly that's mm-hmm. right yeah mm-hmm. so we are talking about covering the female face mm-hmm. in front of non mahram men if if she uh, is above the age of puberty yes mm-hmm. yeah. so now 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 um, <coughs> if you can go into the, the definition with, with within not the definition the, the views of the scholars okay. within within uh, Islam yeah. <coughs> see when we talk about Islam, uh, the Islamic ruling on niqab, we hear different views. Mm-hmm. One view, mainly we have two views. Mm-hmm. One view that says it is compulsory, and the other view that says that it is recommended, but it is not compulsory. But, but there's another view as well, Sheikh. The view that it is it's something that is totally culture. Okay. This is, as you mentioned this, mm-hmm. now, brothers and sisters, viewers, when we talk about any Islamic issue, yeah, anyone can say anything about it. Yes. So when can we? Who speaks for Islam? Mm-hmm. This is the biggest question. <laughs> who speaks for Islam? Mm-hmm. Maybe we, inshallah, one time we have an episode about who speaks for Islam. Yes. So when we say, when I say, is niqab is compulsory. Who am I? Do I speak about? Do I speak on behalf of Islam? When um, Sheikh Al Azhar, the ex Sheikh Al Azhar. Uh, spoke about Islam. He is Sheikh Al-Azhar. So he has this authority. Can he change the rulings of Islam? Or uh, who speaks for Islam? This is a big issue. Now, we say Islam speaks for itself. Very simple. Very, very simple. Please listen to this, brothers and sisters. In Islam, we have matters that the whole Ummah agreed upon. Mm -hmm. And matters that the Ummah disagreed on. Yes. So, the first type is matters that the whole Ummah agreed upon. Those matters, if the whole Ummah agreed upon, then we stick to this, and this is called Ijma' and Ijma' is binding. Mm-hmm. So Ijma' speaks for Islam. As yeah. simple as that. Ijma', the consensus of all scholars. Or you can say the consensus of the vast, overwhelming majority of scholars. So once it is confirmed, khalas. Yes. That is Islam. Now this means that if ijma' was established or the overwhelming majority of scholars agreed on something, that cannot be overturned. Okay. Which means that we have to have a limit in terms of time. In terms of time. So we should say that ijma', the time for ijma' ends at this point. After that, if someone comes to overturn this ruling, his opinion will not be accepted. And we clearly say, uh, see that the best of the nation, the best of Muslims who? The Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then after the, pro- the time, after the companions of the Prophet, the second generation, the third generation, and the third generation, we, by the end of the third generation, we have the four Imams. Imam Abu Hanifa died 150, Imam uh, Malik uh, died 179 Hijra. Imam Shafi'i died 204 uh, after Hijra, and then we have Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, Imam Ahmed died 241 after Hijra. Mm-hmm. So we can say that if 
the Muslim scholars from the time of companions all the way until the four Imams have agreed on something, then it cannot be overturned. Yes. And this is what we have seen from a historical perspective. Normally, if they agreed on something, you don't find the previous scholars disagreeing with this. It is the problem of this time where Muslims are suffering from inferiority complex, Muslims are following different methodologies, that they started to change a few rulings. Mm -hmm. And that's why the issue of niqab became a controversial issue only at this time, maybe in the last hundred century. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was, and I will explain it in a short while, mm -hmm. it was not a controversial issue whatsoever. And mm -hmm. I will prove that, Meaning inshallah. from the perspective of, of being from the religion or culturally? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we just take out the last hundred years and go back before the last um, hundred year, we will see that the scholars have two opinions. Mm -hmm. Either they said it is fard, it is wajib, compulsory, mm -hmm. or they said that it is highly recommended. Okay. Which means that the common denominator between both of them, that it is what? It is something highly recommended, <coughs> but they disagree on what? See, <coughs> this group believes that it is compulsory. Mm -hmm. The other group believes that it is highly recommended. <coughs> Means all of them share that it is highly recommended. Yes. Yani you can look at it like this. Yes. Okay? Yes. So they share in this. But this group does not raise it to this level of this group. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and it means that there is ijma on this level. Mm -hmm. There is consensus on this level that all Muslim ummah agrees or agree that it is something highly recommended. Some of the Muslim ummah mm -hmm. raise it up to be compulsory. Some of them just leave it as what? As highly, highly recommended. recommended. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. But Sheikh... Uh, if this uh, issue is highly recommended, as you said, if people or, or if women uh, d do not do that or uh, leave away this thing, uh, are they sinning like that or, or what? Uh, no, they are not sinning. They are not sinning, but we are talking about now the general ruling. Mm -hmm. They are not sinning, but they are going against what has been established. In some cases, they are sinning. And as you <coughs> mentioned mm -hmm. this point, mm -hmm. let me clarify this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me add mm -hmm. something. So this is the first point, that it is highly recommended. Yes. In some cases, all scholars agreed that s some women in certain circumstances must do it. Oh, really? So they, mm -hmm. will, they will become sinning, all scholars. For example, all scholars. You mean from uh, the two groups? From the two groups. Yes. Okay. Yes. From the two groups. Mm -hmm. All scholars agree that if a woman is very attractive, then she must cover her face. So even the, the group that says highly recommended, even the group share that with says, the other group that it's something that is compulsory. Exactly. Okay. In that case. Okay. If they said, if there is a time of fitna, mm -hmm. the time of fitna, then they said women should cover, must cover. Okay, Th this point has been struggling, I've been struggling to understand. What is the definition? If you can just give us a quick, because it is it is related to niqab as well. Fitna, I mean, how do you, uh, how would you explain or define the, the, the time of fitna? Time of fitna means uh, a time, a specific time where crimes related to sexuality mm -hmm. became more spread. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, 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 for example, in America, every two minutes there's a exactly. case of rape. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, the statistics that I know, every three minutes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. in, in Europe, in Britain, mm -hmm. every day, 167 or 76 mm -hmm. women reported rape case. SubhanAllah. 176 or 67 mm -hmm. rape cases on a daily basis. And this is statistics uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe now it went up. And they say that, by the way, they say that not all women raped report that because of shame. SubhanAllah. So imagine the time. I imagine the real rate. Mm -hmm. So they said in times of fitna or sometimes in circumstances of fitna mm -hmm. means if a woman 
you know, we had uh, this Egyptian, as you are from Egypt, we had this Egyptian story. I'm not quite sure whether it is true or not. Maybe our brother can confirm it. <laughs> uh, that a man, uh, a man with his uh, wife, newly married, mm -hmm. they went into the train, and next to them, or opposite to them, another man, they said from a Saeed, came, and he uh, sit, he sat opposite to them. And that one man, he was not having his wife covering properly. So that man from a Saeed, he started to looking, to look at her. So to the level that he embarrassed her. Mm -hmm. So her husband, of course, became angry. Even if he's not practicing or even his wife is not wearing properly. Mm -hmm. So he became very angry. Mm -hmm. So that man told, her, told this uh, man who is looking to his wife. Mm -hmm. He said, just to stop it. Mm -hmm. He said, why? Mm -hmm. He said, this is my wife. Mm -hmm. He said, but you are displaying it for me. You should have prevented her from doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. You, you are displaying her for me. So mm -hmm. let me enjoy it. Subhanallah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so but it's it, a reality. It's a reality. It is a reality. Mm -hmm. It is a reality. And it people, happens every day, yeah. Yeah, and people are trying to disprove that. It is a reality and we know about it. Let us not just cover the realities. Anyway... The, the, uh, the time of fitna, for example, a woman coming, uh, coming to a situation, all men, then all scholars say that at that point, she has to cover. Okay, so the time of fitna, the time of uh, if the woman is, is attractive. Attractive, yes. Okay, so why do I mention this? Because unfortunately, like uh, Brother Sharif here, when we discuss the ruling of niqab, some scholars jump into the ruling that it is compulsory without mentioning these things. So the, some people who do not want to practice niqab, they jump into this. And mm -hmm. they say, but she's not sinful. Uh, see, I'm not talking about sinning or not, but let us understand the background. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, she might be sinful. Okay? Mm -hmm. And people, as a reaction, they don't look at the fact that it is highly recommended they say that, oh, it is not compulsory. So, in a reaction, as a reaction, mm -hmm. it, is not rec it is not compulsory. Then I leave it and they deal with it as if they is better for them to leave it, not mm -hmm. it is better for them to practice it. Yeah, and, 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 and that's mm -hmm. why I started with this mm -hmm. rather than saying, well, it is compulsory or giving my own opinion. Yes, yes, because it, it leads to the, the <coughs> wrong understanding. If it's not compulsory, then it's just mere permissibility. Yes. Sheikh, we'll take a short break here on the straight path and we'll be back, inshallah, discussing the topic of niqab. We'll be back right after this. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Earth, the human heart, Greed, exploitation, hatred, all diseases of the heart. For the cure, join Huda TV every Sunday at 20 GMT for Moments for the Heart. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching The Straight Path. Our topic today, the niqab. Um, we're still talking to Sheikh Haytham al-Haddad from the UK and also our brother Sharif Hamdi. Um, so we discussed the two main opinions. Compulsory or, or highly recommended? Yes. Okay. If you, why is it then? Why is it then that this third opinion of it is something that is mere culture rather than something from the religion? Okay. Where did it come from? Here... Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Here we need to mention one important point, mm -hmm. that our fiqh is very wide. Mm -hmm. And you can find in the books of fiqh any opinion you want. Yes. Okay. You know, there is one opinion that the last two ayat from uh, the Quran, قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ is not part of the Quran. Mm -hmm. And it is attributed to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Mm -hmm. There is one opinion that some sexual activities are allowed and these are even disgusting, mm -hmm. okay, sexual activities. Mm -hmm. 
you can f- see that some opinions that allow certain types of riba. Mm-hmm. Okay? So it, you will find, do you believe that there is an opinion that when Isha time in, in northern countries like uh, our country mm-hmm. or some other European countries, mm-hmm. uh, when it becomes late, Isha becomes late, then you don't pray Isha. You pray four, four times, not five times. And I heard when I was in the Netherlands that some masajid, some people, in fact, are doing this. They don't believe that Isha is compulsory upon them and they don't pray Isha. So, so they pray for mm-hmm. So, and they attribute this to some scholars from the past. Mm-hmm. So there will be, okay, an opinion about everything. Here, we have to understand that some opinions attributed to some scholars regarding these issues have been mentioned at a certain point of their life. Like Ibn Mas'ud, he used to believe in this, but none of his students, Ibn Mas'ud, who was a companion, he used to believe that the last two of the Qur'an, قُلْ أَعُدُّ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُدُّ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ are not part of the Qur'an. Mm-hmm. But it, it is likely, as many scholars said, that he abandoned this opinion because his students, they did not support this opinion and it is not a well-known fiqh uh, school of thought. Yes. Okay, which means that he mentioned this Maybe at a certain point of his life, mm-hmm. it was his jihad, and then he left it. Yes. Ibn Abbas, they attribute that Ibn Abbas allowed some uh, uh, riba transactions. Okay? Mm-hmm. And they said, no, it is likely that Ibn Abbas left it. Mm-hmm. So there were opinions that have been left it. Mm-hmm. Okay? But it was not well known that they have been left it. But the real test is that you will see that the vast overwhelming majority of scholars abandoned them. Okay. So that is clear. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes some scholars say certain opinions in certain circumstances. And some people, they take them. They -hmm. just pick and they say, look, this is uh, this scholar who said this. Uh, Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. It was known that Ibn Umar, okay, Ibn Umar, who was one of the main fuqaha of the Sahaba, all of us know Abdullah ibn Umar. He used to uh, wash his face in wudu excessively to the level that he lost his eyes. Mm. He lost his eyesight. Now, can we say that washing the face excessively is a valid fiqhi opinion because Ibn Umar used to do it? No. Ibn Umar was doing it as his own ishtihad. He never promoted this opinion. Okay. 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 Same mm-hmm. thing with Abu Huraira. He used to make wudu up to here. Yes. So that opinion is limited to Abu Huraira. It is his own ishtihad at a specific time. So that should not be promoted or taken as a valid fiqhi opinion. Okay. So we have That's to. Clear. That's okay. Clear. Mm-hmm. No. Why? Because some people uh, these days are writing about niqab. And I met recently mm-hmm. with one. He is a very good person. He wrote, he said, some Hanafi scholars clearly said that niqab is a cultural thing. I told him, the main Hanafi school of thought after that, do they believe that it, niqab is, not, is, is a cultural practice? Mm-hmm. And there was another Hanafi with us. Mm-hmm. Okay? He said, no. The Hanafi school of thought, in reality, if you look at it, they believe that niqab is wajib. I mm-hmm. said, okay, either they believe it is wajib or it is highly recommended. Yes. You claim that the early Hanafi scholars, they used to believe that it is a cultural practice. Mm. Do you think that if the early Hanafi scholars believe that it is a cultural practice, the main school of thought... Yes, we're talking about mainstream Hanafi. ...will go against that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you get this point? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If the early scholars of the Hanafi school of thought used to believe, he attributed this to Abu Yusuf, and others, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure about this. If they used to believe that it is a cultural thing, why do we have in the Hanafi school of thought, either it is highly recommended or it is wajib, and many of them, they, they, uh, they confirm that it is wajib in the Hanafi school of thought. Have they gone against the, their, ori- their original shuyukh, Mm-hmm. The main founders of the Hanafi school of thought, it is impossible. Mm. It means that the original opinion of those Hanafi uh, scholars is not as this person understood it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Same thing with other opinions that have been attributed to some uh, scholars. Yeah? Yes. They say Imam Ahmad allows tawassul. But 
Now the official madhab doesn't allow it. Okay, forget about the official madhab. Even Imam Ahmad himself, in many statements, he condemned tawassul, mm-hmm. which means that it was misunderstood that Imam Ahmad allowed tawassul in one of his statements. Mm-hmm. And this is important when we want to discuss any fiqhi issue. Because mm-hmm. some people say, no, some scholars say that niqab uh, is not uh, a recommended thing. It is not a shari thing. We say, no. Mm-hmm. All scholars go to the school of thoughts. Mm-hmm. Imam, uh, the Hanafi school of thought, the Maliki, the Shafi'i, the Hanbali. All of them, either they say uh, clearly that it is wajib, or they say it is highly recommended. Mm-hmm. So, khalas, the matter qudi al-amr. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. matter is confirmed. Now, uh, the why do we have now some scholars who uh, doesn't believe that it is wajib? Mm-hmm. Now, we have the scholars now who doesn't believe that riba is haram. Mm-hmm. Okay? Some other scholars nowadays, although they are classified as scholars, and let me say this clearly, mm-hmm. because of inferiority complex, they started to accept many opinions. And that is unfortunately unique for these days. Yes. In the Muslim Ummah went through so many stages, but it never went through a stage like this we, where we used to look up to the superior people, to the superpowers, mm-hmm. and we feel inferior to them. Yes. And because we are feeling inferior to them, we started to accept their norms as our norms. Not only that, mm. but we started to change, twist, or claim. We sacrifice our, our, our not, selves. No, 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 not even sacrifice. No, mm. even beyond that. Mm-hmm. We started to claim that Islam is like that. Uh-huh. Not sacrificing means mm-hmm. I accept that Islam like this, but I need to compromise it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to compromise on it. Yes. No, we. This is worse than that. It's another level. It is another level mm-hmm. beyond that, mm-hmm. which is no, no. Islam fits into that. Islam in reality is this. Islam is calling for equality between men and women. Islam is calling for this and that. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. So because of this mentality, we started to what to uh, leave many or change or a twist or a claim that Islam is uh, really very compatible to many non-Islamic or Western and non-Islamic values. Okay. So that is the main reason. Okay, so we touched the point, but is there, and, and this is for mere clarification, if you can, is there anything other than these opinions that are not recognized that claims that niqab is, is just something cultural? I haven't heard of any opinion. That From a fiqhi point of view, okay, orthodox mm-hmm. fiqh, mm-hmm. yeah, that Islam, uh, that niqab is a cultural practice. Okay, okay. Let Not us... at all. And in fact, mm-hmm. those who claim that it is a cultural practice, they went against ijma. Because you remember this example, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. either they believe that it is compulsory or it is highly recommended, means that there is ijma. Mm-hmm. Both sides, mm-hmm. as you said, share the opinion that it is something Islamic, highly recommended. Okay. And this is Ijma. So whoever says that it is cultural, he went against Ijma. Okay. Um, so, okay, that's, that's clear, mashallah. In, in Muslim countries, it's easy to practice the freedom of choice between Mus- uh, for the Muslim sisters if they want to wear niqab or don't want to. It's a freedom of choice. In most of the Muslim countries, alhamdulillah. But... What about the... the I, I don't know about that, mm-hmm. that statement. Sorry to cut you. Okay. Okay, but I don't know about that. But anyway, go on. Okay, okay. Um, let, let's look at the, 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 the Muslim minority. Mm-hmm. The, the Muslim living as minority in other countries. Belgium has just banned the niqab. Mm-hmm. France is thinking about it. I, I read on the news lately, Australia, Canada, they're in the process of thinking about it. It was yeah. presented to them in their parliament. Um, yeah. How do Muslim sisters react living in the West? They want to hold on to this culture. But yet, it is being this Islamic practice. The Islamic, the Islamic practice. <laughs> the, the word culture is going on. Yeah. Not my tongue. Stuff for Allah. Um, the, the Islamic practice of 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 wearing the niqab. They are being fought. Can mm-hmm. they can, can they go to the second opinion of uh, by taking yeah. off the niqab? Okay, that is a really a really a very good point. Mm-hmm. Okay, many people pose this point. In fact, mm-hmm. and they said, okay, b- because it is difficult 
because of sometimes they say because it is against integration mm -hmm. sometimes they say because of safety issues yeah. or at least uh, to please the outer society and there is an opinion so why don't we go for it yes see we should look at it carefully mm -hmm. we should look at the matter widely okay and wisely mm -hmm. As, uh, the western the non-muslim western governments mm -hmm. many of them they don't they are not pleased with so many of our practices and they try to find excuses against many of our practices why the main issue why uh, why aren't they pleased with many of our practices? Because our practices are visible. Okay? Islam manifests itself wherever it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have a beard, so you, you manifest yourself. You pray, you manifest yourself. You don't pray in the, at home. Mm -hmm. You pray in a masjid, in a congregation. So you manifest yourself. Forget about niqab, hijab. So sisters are manifesting themselves as Muslims. Yes. In all other religions, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. all other religions, the manifestation of the religion on a social, uh, <coughs> social public platform is minimum. Yes, that's quite true. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. even Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, mm -hmm. the maybe the beard and what, maybe the hat, the the uh, couple they mm -hmm. call it mm -hmm. yes. something like right. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than that, <coughs> it is almost the same. In particular, women. Women are the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, they don't have uh, hijab. They don't have any special clothes. I think this this is putting an extra pressure on the Muslim community. If all exactly. The other, if all the other religions are ready to integrate and to, to leave their culture, why can't the Muslims do the same? That is the point. So Muslims, because of this, they, they, they receive more pressure. Yes and always under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And that's why many European countries, they see Islam, although it is a peaceful Islam, they see it as a threat. A threat for what? For changing the outset of the social or the social outset of the country, mm -hmm. of Europe. Mm -hmm. Even if they are unable, because Europe is unable to define itself. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. yes. they are able to define themselves that they are not Muslims. Yes. Not Muslims means what? They don't have a problem with a person praying at home. Or even mosques which look like uh, place, places of worship, other places of worship. That's why Switzerland, they were very hostile against the, the minara. minara mm -hmm. Because the minara is what? A symbol. A symbol. Mm -hmm. A visible symbol. So they are very hostile against a symbol that attributes itself to Islam. Okay. That's why that is the main, you can say, psychological and social mm -hmm. and maybe ideological uh, stance of Europe against niqab. Yes. yes. All others, all other manifestations of their uh, claims, they are nonsense such as it is against integration, such as it is uh, uh, a barrier, barrier to, to see... The communication as well? A, a barrier for communication. Mm -hmm. In Belgium, they said uh, they find a sister uh, driving mm -hmm. 30 pounds or 30, 30 euros, okay, because that limits her visibility mm -hmm. when she is driving. Uh, safety issue, all other issues are nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a report by, um, uh, I, I forgot what is the exact name of like a think tank group, a small think tank group, mm -hmm. was appointed by the judicial system in Britain, mm -hmm. okay, by the high court, to see whether it is allowed to allow Muslim women who are wearing niqab to attend the court with the niqab. Listen to this people. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, brothers. And inshallah, I will try to find out that report and put it in the website. Mm -hmm. Okay? So people can see it. And they, they had a very detailed study. They are not non-Muslims. They are not sympathizing with Islam. They had a very long report. But they are, uh, le they are reasonable people. They are uh, legal people. Mm -hmm. So they came up with a conclusion that 
in some cases the judge might need to see the face of the uh, person giving testimony and that can be solved by different other solutions other than these limited cases it is fine for women to attend in the court with a niqab this is what this is a legal body appointed by a legal body to to discuss a critical issue regarding a legal process mm-hmm. and they came up with this conclusion now any any excuse they come up with it is not really nonsense for example in the airport mm-hmm. in britain in britain this is the practice i i go with my wife in fact and i have to say this about britain okay and some people say oh you are praising your country or you are praising i have to say this about britain the first when i came with my wife to britain mm-hmm. i came with a niqab and i landed in gatwick and that was in february 2001 mm-hmm. 2001 yeah february before 9/11 in gatwick airport wallahi even they did not the man the uh, the, the, the immigration officer immigration officer mm-hmm. he did not ask her to uncover her face never he didn't ask her now when we go to britain when they ask her to uncover her face we ask them to bring a lady and they bring lady very peacefully in a very nice way all my wife is happy i am happy and they are happy why are we creating a fuss mm-hmm. out of it okay so that can be solved if we are claiming that Uh, like in Australia, they are claiming now there was a, a robbery or a crime because mm-hmm. of niqab. Okay, mm-hmm. it can be done. And the solutions can be also uh, pre- developed. Yeah, because masked men as well do... Uh, exactly, <laughs> it can. Okay, okay, we'll take a short break here on The Straight Path. And we'll be back right after this. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. The world is bright Islam is my sight Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back, you're watching The Straight Path Our topic today, the niqab or the face veil um, Sharif, you had a comment just before we went to yeah, the court Yeah, mm-hmm. Sheikh Haysam mentioned that uh, uh, the niqab uh, uh, Some uh, scholars uh, uh, stated, that, yeah, stated that Uh, it is compulsory or ob- obligatory mm-hmm. and uh, some others stated that it is highly recommended mm-hmm. so the consensus here is uh, is about the rule of highly recommended mm-hmm. so what about the ayah that says وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرُهِنَّ عَلَى جِيُوبِهِنَّ this ayah inti- indicates that the veil uh, covers from, covers from uh, the, the, the head mm-hmm. Uh, uh, down to the, the area of the abdomen mm. without mentioning the face. Uh, but I think if the face, if the face should be covered, uh, the priority here should, should have come to the face. Mm-hmm. Allah should have mentioned something about the face, but He uh, did okay. not. Okay, you want to clarify that quickly, Shaykh? Yeah, okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. First of all, the word jiyu bihinna, what does it mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, of course, all the scholars said that Jiyu Bihinna is this, mm-hmm. okay? The openings in the, in the, uh, in the garment. Okay. So, وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرِهِنَّ In fact, the word خُمُرِهِنَّ Okay, خُمُرِهِنَّ means the covering the face and the total cloak or the cloak that covers the whole body. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, the word خُمُرِهِنَّ mm-hmm. بِخُمُرِهِنَّ And the other uh, point is in order to cover the jayb, mm-hmm. okay, the opening or the pocket, mm-hmm. okay, how are you going to cover it, imagine the woman, mm-hmm. it won't be able, she won't be able to cover it unless she draws something from up, down, mm-hmm. okay, and that was explained in the ayah, in fact, there is a very wonderful book that dealt with this uh, point, um, it is in Arabic, it has not been translated, Uh, it is called Al-Dalala Al-Muhkama Li-Ayat Al-Hijab Ala Taghtiyat Al-Wajib by Dr. Lutfallah Khodja. Uh, hopefully we will translate this book and put it in our website because many people misunderstood the whole point of niqab. Mm-hmm. But see, the main, let me go to the main point that when we think that the meaning of the ayah 
is a particular meaning. Mm -hmm. Let us go to the scholars mm -hmm. and let us see how they understood it. Mm -hmm. And instead of just some people understood the ayah like this. Yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that is a very important principle. Otherwise, some people might understand the ayat of riba that, okay, <coughs> like the very famous opinion, لا تأكل الربا أضعافا مضاعفا. Allah Jalla wa prohibited eating riba, consuming riba when it is multiple faults. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But just simple riba is not allowed. Yes. Okay, they understood it from this ayah. And of course, we can get, have so many uh, misconceptions mm -hmm. like this. But there's yeah. another, there's a question here, Sheikh. Uh, prayer cannot be proper if a bird from aura is uncovered, right? So, uh, Allah di did not mention that, uh, he, he mentioned that when the, the tawaf, the circumambulant the, mm -hmm. uh, around the, the Kaaba, uh, women should uncover their their face. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. doesn't... Oh, it, he has a good point there, Shaykh. Yeah. So why, why did the woman come to the face during Salah? Okay. Pray? Mm -hmm. uh, during Salah is something, uh, During let us deal with uh, during Tawaf or Hajj. Because Jack Straw even, when he spoke about Niqab, against Niqab, he said why women, when they go to Mecca, they uncover their faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, it is not written in any book of fiqh that women, during Hajj, they have to uncover their faces in front of men. They said that hijab, ihram al mar'ati fi wajhiha, means she should, uh, she should not wear niqab. She can cover her face by any other way other than niqab because ihram al mar'ati fi wajhiha means if we wear normal clothes, hmm. okay, outside, outside ihram, mm -hmm. normal clothes with, with openings for our hands and maybe trousers opening for our legs, so, ihram al marati fi wajhiha, she is wearing face cover with opening for the eyes. Mm -hmm. So, she should not simulate the clothes that men wear by wearing something with openings. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is what is meant. That's why the other hadith, atan taqibul mar'a, she did not ask about should a woman cover her face. She said, should a woman wear niqab? Oh, which is the co face cover with the two openings. Mm -hmm. And that's why if she covered her face with another way other than the niqab with two openings, that is allowed. And no one from the scholars, this is a very common um, a misconception mm -hmm. that when you go to Hajj or Umrah, mm -hmm. you uncover your face in front of what? In front of men. Mm -hmm. No. Aisha, in fact, radiallahu ta'ala anha, mentioned this, that we used to uncover our, fa our faces, and we pass by men, we cover our faces. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that should not be, it is a very common misconception. Okay, okay. Now, okay. I think you, you clarify that well as well, inshallah. If, if the viewers can go to YouTube, I think you have some a series on the niqab on YouTube yes, as well. So uh, the yes. viewers can just uh, try, uh, go to YouTube and, 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 and niqab, type in niqab, sheikh haytham, we can you clarify. Let's come back to the point. You have not, uh, we have not really made the conclusion of the 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 the, the, the concept of compromising. The, okay. The, the concept of compromising. Yeah. Why the Muslims in the West should not? And, and this is this is the questions of the Muslims in the West. Why can't we compromise and take the second opinion? And that's the end of the day. I mean, no okay. problem. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, first of all, we say that all excuses presented by Western governments against niqab, they are not really excuses, and we can debate on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but from a practical perspective, they are not excuses. The security threat can be solved. That is not, and I mentioned the example of Britain. Even in banks, if mm -hmm. they need to identify her, she doesn't need to uncover her face from the door. Mm -hmm. Okay, she can. And in order to identify her, in any place in Europe, you will find men and women working together. So she can identify herself in front of women. Yes. Okay, that is not a real problem. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the issue, why don't, we, why don't we go for the second opinion? If we say that it is not an issue, then why do we need to go for the second opinion? Mm -hmm. Okay? If people still believe that it is wajib, why do they need to go to the second opinion? This is one thing. The other thing, which is very critical, and that's why I said even to some shiuch from Muslim countries, please don't be involved in our discussion, because yeah. you don't know the real context there. The Western governments, they, they are not against niqab because it is covering the face. 
As I said, it, they are against niqab because it is a manifestation of different religion or different culture taking place. And moreover, because it is a manifestation of a different style, lifestyle for women. Mm -hmm. And they have this problem against women because of, okay, from if we don't want to have this... Uh, what you call uh, uh, conspiracy theory, that they are always thinking against us. But from the other perspective, because of the problem of the suffragette and women's right before, mm -hmm. okay, historical issues, they, so they, they are very sensitive with regards to anything related to women. Mm -hmm. And that's why they took, they started with this. So let us understand the whole concept that it is just resisting against the visibility of Islam. Going back to the symbol. Exactly. The symbol theory. Once e the symbol is there, there should be some opposition. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is the main point. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, and I am saying this number of times, even if some brothers, some shuyukh, some scholars, they believe that niqab is not wajib, they should not promote anti-niqab because they are helping the governments against, not niqab, against the presence of Islam in Europe. Mm -hmm. And I say to many people that see, in France, they banned hijab, not niqab, hijab in public places. How did they manage to do this? Because the people compromised and then because they compromised, the, the bar was low. Mm -hmm. So the government can lower the bar more. Yeah. But if the bar is high, mm -hmm. then the government will think twice to bring it as low as possible. And that is when in England, for example, if they want to think about banning hijab, they will say, oh, but just hold on. This we have a problem with women wearing niqab. Mm -hmm. So let us first start with niqab. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after some time, if we are successful, then we ban hijab. Yes. Because if you... If Once you open the door to... Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is the point. And we have to be careful. That's why I am, inshallah, we will be launching a campaign, a niqab campaign in Britain, and we will try to make it big in Europe, because now it became a serious issue. And please, brothers and sisters, let us not take it as a fiqhi issue. Let us take it as what? P presence of real Islam. Mm -hmm. Not just the presence of Islam, because they don't mind of having some Muslims with practicing some uh, Islamic issues. Mm -hmm. No, presence of Orthodox Islam in Europe. So it is a battle between the presence of Orthodox Islam in Europe or the presence of European Islam, European Islam that has assimilated, lost the identity. That is the real challenge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to bring back the identity and make you successful in this campaign as well. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Sheikh Haytham, Jazakallah khair for being with us once again on the straight path. May Allah continue to reward you and help you, inshallah, in your cause of upbringing of Islam, not only in Europe, but in the world as a whole, inshallah. Brother Sharif, Jazakallah khair for being with us on the straight path. And if you have any comments or questions for us here, you can write to us at Straight path at huda.tv and you can also visit uh, the Sheikh's website which is www.islam21c.com and you can see more videos about niqab from the Sheikh. Just go to YouTube, type in the word niqab, Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad. And is okay, the Sheikh just give me a recommendation that YouTube should be better, inshallah. Islamic but, tube. Islamic tube. Islamic tube. Sorry, Islamic tube. Okay, well, that wraps it up here for today. and um, uh, I leave you with insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now I found the light after those long dark nights. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Now I found the light after those long dark nights. Islam is my sight, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight, Islam is my sight.